who was the man of the match, of course, talking to Dara Maloney. Now let's uh, go to Dara, who's talking to Brian Kerr. Brian, the end of the dream, how do you feel? Well, obviously, I'm bitterly, bitterly disappointed for everybody, but uh, we could give no more. The team, team gave everything, um, the staff gave everything, and didn't quite go for us tonight. They defended very, very well. They made a couple of clear-cut chances. We had a, a few, fair few halves with a lot of crosses into the box, but it wasn't tonight that we lost the, the possibility of qualification. Um, we, we gave it a real good go tonight. The support was amazing. Fans were fantastic. And the team, as I've said, they give everything that they have. Maybe you know we quite we hadn't quite got enough. We short a couple of players, and maybe you know that could have told told against us. But they're a good side, and they probably deserved more respect than they've had previously before tonight's game. There were a lot of long balls into the penalty area, starting in the first half, but a lot towards the end of the second half, which is a natural enough thing. But it didn't work. Was that a conscious decision to be pumping those in there and hoping for? for a knockdown, a half chance? Well, I thought we tried to play it wide and we tried to play it down the sides of the big central defenders. As I said many, many times, we don't have a big team. We need to try and get it on the floor. But they played it very tight in the middle of the field with Van Lanten dropped off the front to, to stop us getting it into midfield and passing. We still got it out to Andy Reid and Kevin Kilban quite a lot. The game was... Uh, it was similar to most of the games between France ourselves and Switzerland. It wasn't it wasn't very open. There wasn't too much opportunity to get it to get it down and knock it about. But there was patches patches of it that I felt were reasonably decent. But it was also an anxiety to get it in there. And uh, you know they've they've conceded a few sloppy goals when the ball was put into the box and put in between the centre backs and the goalkeeper. When you look at the table, you mentioned the Israel games and the, the four points that went away from us then. Was, was there a, a turning point for, for this group after the late goal uh, conceded in Tel Aviv? That was a real killer blow. Well, I think in the group, uh, that makes it now between the top four teams, the, the uh, 12 matches played, and 11 of them were drawn. I think it shows how close it was, how unusual the group was. And the one match was lost. Obviously, France got the uh, the edge on everybody by the, the moments of magic here. I think that was uh, that was a critical turning point in the group when, when uh, Henri scored that goal. How have you found the last week, ten days? I know it's been difficult. Um, well, I've been working very busily, uh, and I've been, you know, we've been in a little bit of cocoon uh, in many ways, preparing the team. It's been busy time because the games come together so quickly, and we had to travel back from Cyprus and recover from that. So it's been very, very good, very intense. I thought we did as much as we possibly could in terms of uh, preparing everybody individually, uh, collectively for the game. So you know, for me, it was just it was it was it was a long spell of work, decent work. I'm disappointed it didn't come to to. Uh, to a better end, but you know that's football. It uh, you don't always get what you want, and you know I've been described as a lucky manager before. I don't think we've had any any luck at all in the last few months. What about the future, Brian? There'll be more speculation in the papers tomorrow and in the days ahead about your future with this position and this team. Well, I've done you know I've done this job to the to the yeah, yeah. utmost of my ability over the last. Uh, Two and three quarter years. Um, I've loved the job. I've done it with a passion and intensity that people who know me would understand. But you know, it's not for today. Uh, I'm not in control of that either. And you know, people know what my position is on it. But you want to continue in this job? Uh, the association are clear about my intentions. Well, that's a very political response, I think. What do you make of that? He's not going to resign. I'd say about the sound of that. No, and I don't think he should resign. I really don't think he should resign. It's up to the association to make the call. Um, I think Brian wants to stay on. He wanted to stay on going back a few months ago when things were going very, very well for him. And the association didn't take the bait then. And uh, it probably means that the association will dispense of his services now. That's what it, all, it, all, all the pointers are, are going, Bill. Mm. He said he was unlucky. He said he, he felt he was unlucky. but. They've got 12 points out of two games against the Faroe Islands and two games against Cyprus. And they've managed only five out of 18 between Israel, France and Switzerland. And I don't think that's down to luck. No, and of course it goes back to the fact that he hasn't really beaten any side of any consequence in his particular <laughs> There hasn't been, half been years. any side in the top 80 in the world mm. since he got the job. Um, it's, um, he, he did have uh, the wit to bring Roy Keane back, um, 
that um, you get an argument no, no, Liam, on that one. No, no, Liam. I don't think that was a good move. Well, I really don't. Well, that's. Yeah. A, a, I think it was very important that his absence tonight uh, was very noticeable. But I don't think the coach um, uh, can have any uh, gripe if the association don't renew his contract, which ends at the end of the qualification That's right. period. That's right. So I think they've kept their side of the bargain. I've never been a big fan of the FAR, or never, but I think in this uh, instance, um, there's an obvious uh, need for a change, I would say. It's, uh, I don't but really like calling for people to lose their jobs um, at this stage, because he's had less time than Charlton and less time than McCarthy. Yeah, that, that was and the point I was going to make. It's worth m bearing in that in mind. I think what troubles anyone who wants to support his staying on is that this, the serious and evident decline of the last 12 months mm. since the Israel game. There's been a serious and very obvious decline in the performances that the players are giving for him. And the coach's job is to get performances and to put teams on the field that have a shape and a sense of purpose mm. about them. He's palpably failed to do that in that period of time mm. and that is that, that those are the criteria okay now, but can I can John will you pick up Eamon's point there that, that it's uh, he's got less time as a manager than McCarthy or Charlton and I mean in, in fairness like we owe an awful lot to Kerr. Kerr has done a huge amount really in terms of Irish teams and developing youth teams and that and he has been he's I think he's made a, a remarkable contribution should that be taken into account I don't think the contribution that you make at uh, uh, underage level, Bill, despite the fact that it was very, very good, should be taken into account when it comes to the senior manager's job. It doesn't bear any resemblance, actually, Bill, to doing that job and doing the senior manager's job. There's only one thing matters in the senior manager's job, and that's winning matches, the team improving, getting to World Cup finals, and certainly if you don't get to World Cup finals, do it in a manner that augurs well for the future. Mm. That hasn't been the case, so you can eliminate the, the underage uh, performance by Brian Kerr. Good as it was, and, and, and I think people in that level of the game should be grateful uh, to him. But you will not be judged as a, in the senior manager's job at what you do at underage level. It's a totally different job altogether, and Brian would have to be judged on what he's done since he's come in. Okay. I just said the thing with McCarthy, he did get other chance, but Mick McCarthy, I think, did promise more in his continuation in the job because he, got the, he reached the playoffs uh, matches and it, it did board a little bit better for the future than we saw in the way we've been eliminated from this particular okay, competition. Briefly. There's one other point, um, the, the controversies of recent days with the media, recent weeks and with the FAI were of his own making yeah. and I don't think that helped the team tonight or indeed on Saturday. Okay. I want one final point from you. When we walked back from Lansdowne Road, from here in Lansdowne Road, after the French match, you said if there was to be a change of manager, he would look at a very, very bleak outlook because there was nobody coming through in your judgment. Well, that's what he's got to work with. There's nothing coming behind, um, n nothing like resembling a, another R Robbie Keane or another Damien Duff. But that side, I think, has performed. And I think with the right guidance and insistence of a certain type of style of play, it can come again. Do you think so? I think so. The team is young enough. Mm -hmm. Do you think the team is potential, John? Well. It, it, it can certainly play a lot better than it has done in the last two matches, Bill. And the last two matches is what has put us out of this particular competition. Because the talk before the match was, despite everything else, you know, if, we'd, uh, if, if we would have settled for playing Switzerland at home to get a win, to get into the playoffs at least. But that's what happened tonight, and we just didn't perform. Yeah. So, well, you know, it, it, it's... Uh, I wouldn't... It's four years before the next major championship finals, Bill, the European championship finals. And I think we, um, we have to rebuild Irish soccer. The, without Keane, you're left with Duff and Robbie Keane. They're our big players, and Robbie Keane's having a, a tough time at the moment, but he's been a big player for Ireland, could be again. Damien Duff, uh, Richard Dunn, uh, John O'Shea has been a terrible disappointment for Manchester United and for Ireland. Somebody that there isn't a, a two or three real quality players that you need to be, com to be competitive at this level, at the highest level, to go to championships, don't exist at the moment. So whoever inherits this side has to come to terms with that reality. Which so, might make it very difficult to get the kind of manager that absolutely. you want. Absolutely. No that chance is. of a top man taking it, in my view. have to be a young, hungry fighter, <laughs> which rules out an awful lot of people around here. Well, and in fact, I saw the paper Liam saying would be Mr great. Brady would be Liam, one of would you, you fancy the like job, Liam? Liam? Would you fancy the job? With Eamon? No, no, no. Would you fancy no. the job? Answer the question. No. You have been put forward as a proper... As a, no. As I somebody who might take it. No. You wouldn't take it? No. Okay. 
Right. I would. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't offer it to you. You haven't even been asked, him. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks to, to John Dwayman and Liam for their contributions this evening. And all through the World Cup, in fact.